and I felt I had all these things I wasn't telling people that I had done that were wrong, and I was such a bad person. And did I you, thought, did you have any friends that you could confide in? You Anybody? Can't conf I couldn't. I never told my husband. We were married for four and a half years, and I never told him once that I was unhappy, and he never knew that I was unhappy. Why? Why? What were you afraid he would do? He would have to report it immediately. He'd have to report what I told him. Any friends, he'd have to report what I told him. You know, say I had told my dad, my dad wouldn't have reported it. But then I would have this withhold, as they call it, that I had done something really wrong. And then I'd end up having to tell. Because they have things called e-meters. It's like a lie detector. And you really think that these will find out what you've done wrong. So you're in constant fear of them finding out. So you can't even say, well, I can think these things and not tell them. You're in constant fear that they're going to that they're going to find out what you're thinking. But you were uh, uh, holding these uh, fairly high posts, so you must have done a really good job of appearing to be a very good CEO. You know, member. when I ended up leaving, people were very surprised because I was considered a great staff member. I produced a lot. I got awards, you know, and everyone was just shocked because I did do a very good job of, I just learned how to, like, not say anything. And I have trouble now, like expressing my feelings, telling people how I feel. I'll get upset and I won't say anything. Yeah. Because that's what I've learned to do for like five years or longer, really. But, and, and I have to like force myself to say, well, actually, you know, that upset me. Mm. Because I, I just, I think there's something wrong. I don't ever want to say I'm upset or I'm having bad feelings or anything. Right. What about you, Zoe? The, I was just going to say that in the CEO, you start to police your own thoughts. Like, you think, oh, and you, you, I can't think that, I can't think of that thought, but then you do, but then you're like, oh, no, and you kind of, like, slap yourself around mentally. I mean, it it's put really me under weird. so much stress, like, trying to, yeah. trying not to have these yeah, you thoughts. Could, you could yeah. have a relaxing day and just go to the park, but all the time you're still struggling mentally to not think certain things, and, to, you know what I mean? Like, it just, you could never be at rest or relax about your own mind. Hmm. Like, I, I could never admit to myself that I actually didn't want to be there. I'd say 90% of the staff there, if you said to them, if, if they're, you know, if the management said to them, you guys can leave right now, no strings attached, you won't get in trouble, they'd go. Mm -hmm. They'd just be gone. I spent like two years in the Sea Org and I had a similar experience, you know, I just wasn't happy. I j uh, but I would think to myself, I would look at my wife, I would look at other um, Sea Org members, and I would think, well, they're happy, yeah. you know, they're on purpose. Yeah. So I remember wrong. at least two occasions I went to ethics and I just made a clean front of it and I thought, they will fix me so yeah. that I'm on purpose mm -hmm. with the program and happy. And yeah. I would just, I confess everything. I say, I'm not happy, there's something wrong with me. Would you give me something that would fix me and make me happy? Yeah. Wow. And I, I did that on two occasions. Yes, I would never and they would say, that. yes, you do these conditions, you know, work through these lower conditions, do extra mess work, you know, and then they'll give me a whole bunch of references to read. Just read through all these and you'll be fixed. And I'll work through this program and work through it. And like, I wasn't feeling better. And then eventually, I would just fake it and say, okay, yeah, I've read yeah. all those programs, I feel better now, I'm ready to continue. Mm -hmm. And then it would go back to worse than it was, because then I thought, well, I can't go well, and turn myself no in, there's no yeah. hope, what do I do now? Yeah. And you're more trapped. Yeah. So it's a horrible, horrible thing. It feeling. was similar for oh. me, because I never went and admitted it, but so many people had admitted it to me, and I'd given them those programs and those handlings to do, and they would be happy for a while, they'd do just what he did, say, oh, okay, I'm fine, and then a month later, wouldn't be able to take it anymore, and come back and say, I want to leave again. So I knew it was the same thing that was going to happen to me. So I was just hoping that one day it would change, because I thought it was something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. There must be something wrong with me. If everyone else here is so happy and doing so well, and this is such a great thing, and we're making the whole planet, we're saving mankind, something must be wrong with me. But what's interesting yeah. is you're acting like you're fine, because you don't want anybody to think there's anything wrong with you, and you're looking around seeing everybody else acting fine. And you're believing that they really yeah. feeling fine, but they're probably well. That's why I said if you if you said to the staff, go ahead, leave. You won't get a free letter bill. You won't get in trouble. You won't be looked down upon. You can just leave now. They'd be gone. Mm. I remember hearing about cases like that all the time. People would be like, oh, they're roller coastering. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's yeah, they're roller coastering yeah. or like PTS or like mm -hmm. they're so someone's, potential trouble someone's source. Giving, yeah, yeah, giving yeah. them these ideas and stuff. So. I would always hear that, like, someone says they want to leave, and then they change their mind, and it would go on for, like, years, and then 
people say, we need to get them just finally handled and get them to decide to stay. I mean, give me a break. They're ridiculous. They're, they're stupid people. It was like that. That was the attitude. Another thing that I was afraid of is they have a, an expression called external influences. And that's anybody, your family, friends, or otherwise who aren't in the Sea Org who speak to you and in any way have an effect on you that may make you want to leave. Or even if you're not saying you want to leave, you're perfectly happy. But if they're giving you gifts, talking to you more than once in a blue moon, spending time with you if you get the day off, then they're yeah. an external influence. External to the Sea Org? External, yeah, external to Scientology? They could be a Scientologist. But external to the Sea Org, they're very because they it's, they have a hard time getting new staff, and then they have people leaving. So they're like they got to hold on to the people they have, and um, that's a big thing. Their external influences. They regularly do investigations to find out who has an external influence on their lines. My dad was considered an external influence, especially because he had been in the Sea Org and left. Mm. He was still considered a Scientologist, but I was he was one of my seniors used to say, "Your external influence called for you." <gasps> meaning You're my father. Oh. I was told later on, um, a year before I left, I was told on no uncertain terms, I cannot see him. I'm not allowed to see him unless I am getting him to go back into this organization. I am not allowed to see him. Well, now let me, let me just clarify this here. You were out of the Sea Org. I was out of the Sea Org, but I was, but you were still, I was still an yourself. active Scientologist. I was still, still paying money for services, so I was. Yeah, but they have a policy. I was part of the program still. Anybody who leaves the Sea Organization is a degraded being. Whether or not they continue in Scientology, they could continue in Scientology, they could give a bunch of money, they could do everything. They're considered a degraded being. There's kind of a red flag over their head. So if Astor's not doing well, red alert, external influence.